Good morning. So I am Jennifer and the word for today comes from Philippians 4.13. And you probably don't even have to turn there because you know this scripture, but it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know, I know it's become cliche. It's all over buttons and t-shirts, but when I tell tell you when you get down to this word and what this word is saying my goodness we got to start I, I got to calm down because I'm already getting up and excited about it right when we think about the magnitude of what the Lord wants to do with us my God it requires him it requires them. You cannot do a God calling, fulfill a God assignment without God and expect to do it to the fullness that the Lord desires that glorifies his mighty name. Some of us are trying to do God assignments in human limitation. You can only take yourself so far. I tell you, think about how the Lord could want to use you in your home as a minister in your home, to be his representation in your home, to be Christ in your home, to be love in your home. Do you know how much that takes to be a mother? that operates in love to be able to guide your children so that they are able to come into the fullness of who God has created them to be and to be able to move into their God purpose, to be able to follow the Lord where he's leading them based on who he created them to be. And he wants you to do that. He wants you to be able to help nurture them and heal them and bring them along in this life. He wants you as a father to do that as well. To be able to teach, to be able to discipline these kids, to be able to shepherd them in the direction that they will go in as the father leads them. Oh, what he wants you to do as a husband, as a wife, to wash your wife over with the word to be able to help her come into the fullness of what God has for her to help her to lead the children. Oh, for you as a wife to be able to be the helpmate for your husband, to be able to provide all those things that your husband does not have without you and cannot have without you because it's not good for man to be alone. So he made you for specific purpose. Oh, not only does he want us to do that, he wants us to work in fellowship in community with church. He wants to use you and establish you in the church, not just to purify and sanctify you so that you could become more holy, not to just build a connection, but he wants to use you in the church because you have gifts that he's placed in you that are meant to edify and build up the church. He wants you to be able to exhort the church, right? So he's using you to do that. Not only that, but he's also desiring you to work in a specific vocation. What is the career that he has for you? Is it in the church or is it outside the church? And he, which he wants you to use you to be his representative in the world, to be able to heal people, to be able to love on people, to be able to deliver souls. Oh, he wants to use you in so many different areas. He's placed you on a field that's uniquely your own, that's surrounded with neighbors, with the community. He wants you to be able to touch 
We think about these jobs and just being present and being available for a supervisor, for a coworkers, for whoever it is that's coming in your presence. Lord, not only that, but there's so much he wants to do in you and constantly working through the layers of a mess that the world puts on us so that our light can shine through to purge you of that darkness, to purge you of that evil so you can get your thoughts right, so you can get your mind right, so you can purify your heart, so you can cleanse that soul and shift it over to the Holy Spirit so you could have that transforming union where that soul is inclined, that will is given over to Christ. The Lord wants us to do so much, and yet there's only 24 hours in a day, and we still need sleep. (laughs) We still need to take care of our natural realities, our natural affections, right? We still need to eat. We still need to sleep. We still need to exercise and take care of ourselves. We still need to go to our physicals, our medical appointments, our dental appointments, our eye exams. We still need to take care of ourselves. (laughs) We still need to learn and still train and sometimes still need to be educated. So sometimes there's schooling required for more schooling some type of formal school, you know, sometimes there is simply training that needs to be done or we can do self-study and he guides us through self-study where, you know, if he's calling you to the prophetic, he may want you to read books on the prophetic. If he's calling you to uh, pastoralship, maybe he wants you to read books on becoming a pastor. He wants you to get with a mentor so you can be able to be led by that mentor. He's opening you up to friendships, to bringing people uh to you so you can have a like kind, right? He could be building a ministry in your home where he's going to start bringing people to you one by one. And you're wondering, why do people always come to me with their problems? That's because he's drawing them to you because he wants to use you. Yet there's still only 24 hours in a day. I'm telling you, I don't care what you want to do in this life? Do you want to get financially savvy? Do you want to be a better wife? Be a better. You cannot do all of that and all of what God wants you to do without him. At what point do we make the connection that first and foremost, we need God because anything we do in this life, we are going to need the enablement, the endorsement of heaven (laughs) backing us up. We are going to need God because what he's calling us to is big. Sometimes we can't even handle what we're doing right now. So it would be irresponsible for him to give us more, knowing that there's more responsibility, there's more criticisms, right? The devil's going to come for you even harder, right? The wolves there are even more present at that next level than they are at the level where you're at. You would get ate up with all that he's calling you to do. If you're not prepared for it, if you're not grounded in him, it'll drive you to brinks of insanity, madness, right? Extreme torment, suicide. You won't be able to handle the magnitude he has for you. So he has to keep you here at a level in which you can manage and only apply the pressure to take you only so far because it's all that you can handle. Oh, but if you give yourself over to him and you get grounded in your relationship with him and you surrender, you surrender to him. So it's not you trying to control everything and you making all these decisions and you saying where you're going to work, who you're going to talk to, who you're going to connect with, if you're going to be with that person or listen to this person. You're just completely open to the Lord and say, hey, where do you want me to go? 
What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to talk? You know what? You got me with this individual. I don't like them, but I know I need them. So I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to sit under them, right? He could be bringing you a friend, a boss who you like, you don't like, and you judging them. But meanwhile, God's like, I got deliverance in that person for you. So you really got to make sure that you're surrendered and open first to the Lord. What you have for me, I won't. I'll do it. Make sure you're intimate with him. You're building that intimacy with him so that you can hear him. Working on establishing that identity. Who are you in Christ? Who does he want you to be? Not only that, but who is he to you? He he is able to reveal himself to you in new and fresh ways as you go deeper in him and higher in him. Building that trust, that reliance on him, building that faith, knowing that you know that he's going to come through for you, building that level of obedience, that strict obedience, being willing to be in step with him. When we do all of those things, God backs you. God enables you. He empowers you. He graces you. He gives you favor. He puts his hand on you. He gives you the ability to do things that you couldn't do on your own. It's through Christ that we live this life he wants us to live. You're thinking it's too much. It's not too much. It's not much in God's hands. It's much in yours. It's actually very little in God's hands. He's like, but you need my hands. <laughs> You're asking to be my hands and feet and you want to use your hands and feet. Do you know what my hands can carry? Do you know what my feet can trample on? Do you know how far my feet can go? Do you know what my hands can do? So then do you want my hands or do you want to use yours? Do you want to use my feet or do you want to use yours? Telling you, you can do only so much, which your own hands and your own feet. Oh, but through Christ, you could do all things. Let him do it. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, ah, I pray. I pray for surrender, Lord. I pray that you help whoever is watching this, and I thank you for them, Lord, to simply just surrender to you. To with reckless abandon their own agenda, their own will, their own ways. So that they can learn and adopt yours, God. I ask that you speak to them, Lord. And help them to lean into the magnitude of what you want to do with them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.